In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to create merged toolpaths. This is where you can take a single tool to cut multiple toolpaths, but then merge them so you can use them in a manufacturing way. So let's have a look at how we do that. So first, we're going to go ahead and click the open an existing file button. And we're going to get our coasters file. Now, this is available under the merging toolpath guides files folder. So let's double click that. And you'll notice when it opens up into the software, if we pop into the 3D view, we can see our layers in color. Now our layers up here in our layers tab represent each of the toolpaths we'll be doing. In this case, we've got pockets in blue, the details in green, and we've got the profile in red. And you can see I can turn them on and off to represent each one. Now speaking of toolpaths, let's pop over to the toolpath menu by clicking this button on the top left here. And you can see here we've got our toolpaths in order. We've got the pocket first, the profile, and the cutout. And you'll notice that all of them use the same tool, the 0.25 end mill or the quarter inch end mill. So let's have a look at how these toolpaths look. So I've got my pocket toolpath first. So I'll go over to my preview toolpath button and I'm going to click preview selector toolpath. And you can see it's cutting out my pockets first. And after it finishes these up, we'll be able to cut the detail path to add details to the coasters. And finally, I've got a cutout pass, which has included some tabs. So when we come to cut these out, we can safely remove these by cutting off the tabs. Now, currently the problem I have is if I wanted to, let's say, cut this bottom left one out, have it all cut all the toolpaths and then move on to the next one. It currently doesn't do that because it does the pockets first, then the details and the cutout. And that's where merge toolpaths come in, because with merge toolpaths, we can change that and actually pop this one off fully, finish it while the rest of these are machining up. So let's have a look at how we do that. So let's close out this menu and let's go to merge toolpaths. So you can see it currently says I have no toolpath selected. And that's because I have no toolpath selected. So if we come down here and we check this icon here, it will highlight all of our toolpaths. And now you can see our toolpaths are being displayed in the menu. We've got our pocket, our profile, and our profile cutout. Now notice that I haven't got a warning here. Now you may get a warning if you're using a different set of tools. So let's say you've got a quarter inch end mill, an eighth inch, and another, and another quarter inch. The issue there would be because you're not using the same tool, you couldn't merge a toolpath and you may get a warning at this stage. So it's important to note that uh, that you may get that depending on what tool you're using. Now, if you look at the ordering options here, we've got left to right, grid, bottom to top, and shortest path. And it's important to note here that if you choose all of these options and check all of them, what the software will actually do is use the shortest rapid move to represent for your preview uh, for these parts. And you can see here, we can also merge by part, which is what we're going to do because we want to cut one part and then pop it off and go to the next and finish that part while the other part's machining. So what we can do now is have a look at creating a name for our merge toolpath. So I'm just going to delete the one and click merge toolpath. Now you'll notice I now have a parent toolpath effectively, which is encompassing all the other toolpaths I had before. So now this has effectively become one toolpath. Now the software will still respect the order of the toolpaths. It will do the pocket first, then the detail, then the cutout when it's actually doing the toolpath. So when it's actually cutting out, it will respect this toolpath order and will do its best to try and go to the left or right based on the start points and other factors that are going on in our vector line. So it's a good idea to watch your toolpath and understand where it's going. So to do that, I'd perhaps look at looking at the preview and turning this down very slightly so I can see where exactly the toolpath starts and I can see what's going on. So have a, let's have a look at doing that. So let's just reset our preview and click preview visible toolpaths. Now you can see it's currently started in the bottom left hand corner. And so what it's doing is it's doing the pocket first, then it's going to move on to the detail and then it's going to go ahead and do the cutout. And now what I can do at this stage is I can pop this one off while this one's machining. And you can notice that this is now going left to right. So I can pop this one off, finish it, come back and get this one, etc. Uh, while the rest of the machine. So you can see it's respected our left to right order, which is what we had in our merged toolpath earlier. So you can see now it's just finishing up the rest of the preview. And as we get to the end of it, we can see how beneficial that merged toolpath is because now we can actually work on these parts while the other parts are cutting out. Now, let's say you wanted to make a change to your Merge toolpath, which is actually really easy to do. All you have to do is come over to the Merge toolpath and double click it. And you'll notice you have all your options again. So let's say you wanted to change the option of the ordering or even change this option here, which is Merge by Part, which is where, let's say for whatever reason, we didn't want to preserve the order, then we can have the option to uncheck the Merge by Part option, and then we can Merge toolpaths again. 
Now notice we get this warning message here, the resulting merge toolpath will not necessarily preserve the current toolpath order or the cutting order with an existing toolpath. And this is important to know because you need to be sure that everything gets cut in a safe and appropriate manner for the tools that you're using in the material that you have and then make any adjustments accordingly. So let's just click OK for now. We can have a look at resetting our preview and we can preview our current toolpath and see what that now looks like. And you can see the orders just changed very slightly because it went to the circles first last time, went over to the left again. And there we are, there's our finished preview. Now it may be important to use this technique depending on your manufacturing process that you have, so it's always great to experiment with this to see if you can come up with the most efficient way of cutting your parts. So we can now close this out and now we can have a look at, so let's say for whatever reason you need to make a change to one of these toolpaths uh, with this merge toolpath. So it's actually very easy to do. So let's say I need to change my pocket toolpath. So I can double click that pocket toolpath and currently I've got it set to 0.3 inches. Well, let's say I want to put it down to 0.25 instead. All I have to do is change that value, click calculate, and this will automatically apply to the merge toolpath. In fact, we can reset our preview and we'll preview our visible toolpaths again. And keep an eye in the bottom right hand corner, just here where my mouse is hovering near the X. In a moment, when I put my mouse over the preview, you'll see it's giving you some coordinates and you can see the Z value is 0.25, which is what we just set it to for the pockets. That change has been applied there when we hit calculate on that toolpath. And finally, let's say if you didn't want these toolpaths to be merged anymore, then that's actually very easy to do. You can just simply come over to the merge toolpath, click on it, right mouse click, and choose the ungroup option here. And what will happen is the merge toolpath is now gone, and the original toolpaths are now ungrouped back into the original toolpath order. You can see the pockets there, the profile, and the cutout, so these toolpaths are no longer merged. And with that, that concludes our tutorial on the merged toolpath guide. I hope you have enjoyed it, and of course we look forward to seeing you in the next video.